Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to the Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. This is an old game. This is Naval War from Avalon Hill. I think the original publisher of this was Battleline. But anyhow, this is a game loosely based on World War II combat. It's a beer and pretzels game. In no way, shape, or form is this meant to be a historical simulation. Uh, Basically, the ships you get on each side can be from any navy, so you can have like German and American ships on the same side and stuff, but it is a very fun game. Let me uh, explain how the game is set up. You first uh, give each player, uh, it plays three to nine players, so you give each player five ship cards and five play cards. First thing you do with the ship cards then, before the game starts, is you look at your ship cards and you organize them by gun size. So that's a 14 inch, that's an 11. There's another 14, so you put them in columns uh, based on gun size. Here's an 18 inch one, and here's a 16. If you have an aircraft carrier, it goes beneath these because uh, aircraft carrier is immune to attack until all the ships in front of it have been defeated. So I'll do this for the other players and then, all right, now that the Ship cards have all been organized for the three sides. The first thing that happens before the game starts is starting with a dealer. The dealer will look at his hand to see if there's any special cards. And special cards are submarine cards, uh, minefields, torpedo boats, and uh, so forth. All right, so he's got a minefield, so he can play the minefield immediately. So he's going to put it on here. This is a minefield of two, which means it does two damage to every ship in that fleet. And it's an ongoing thing here. If they put out more ships later, that will whatever ship they put out will immediately take two damage and a minefield can only be removed with a minesweeper card. All right, those are the only specials he has. Let's look at this player's cards here. All right, he's got some additional ship cards. He's got two of them. So he will discard these and draw two ships and add it to his force. So he gets a 15-inch gun ship, two 15-inch gun ships, the Hood and the Renown. So this will go here. All right, let's check the last player here if he has any special cards. He has no special cards. So now the regular game begins. The players will determine uh, who the first player will be. Uh, for simplicity here, I'll just say it's the dealer. All right, the basis, basic sequence of play is you draw a card and then play a card from your hand, or if you have an aircraft carrier, you can forgo the card drawing and playing and just attack directly with your aircraft carriers. So this player is going to go, so he's going to draw a card. He's got a 16 inch salvo here that does two damage, so he will place that, let's see, he'll place it on this ship here. All right, since he played a card, he doesn't have to discard. Next player will go. He's got two aircraft carriers, so he's not going to draw. Instead, he's going to use his aircraft carriers uh, instead of uh, drawing a card. So he's going to attack with the first one, this ship here. If he rolls a one, that ship is sunk. He rolls a one, so he gets that ship. That This goes into his deep six pile here, which will be used for victory points at the end of the game. Here's his other aircraft carrier. That is going to fire at... This one here, the 18 inch gun one. Six, nothing happens, so his turn is done. All right, this guy here, he's gonna draw one. He's got uh, 15 inch guns here, so he's gonna play a 15 inch card. And this one's already got four damage, two from that, two from the minefield, so it'll do two damage here. And he can put this ship in his deep six pile. All right, this player will go. We'll do one more round here, and then I'll show some of the other special cards. We're not going to do a full game, so let's draw one. 
doesn't have a fifth. Actually, he's got nothing he can shoot here. Doesn't have 12.6s. Oh, he does have a 14, so he'll use he'll shoot with the 14. So he's going to shoot at the this one here. All right, and this player here will go. Go. He's going to just try to sink with his aircraft carriers again. So he can go after this one six, and then with the other aircraft, they'll go after the same one. Or, all right, nothing happens there. And this one here will go. He drew the Minesweeper card. Uh, that's a card that player really wants to get. He's got smoke here, so he's going to put it in front of his forces and until his next turn. No one can attack him unless they have uh, submarines enough, but normal salvos can't attack. Those are the basics of how the sequence of play works. Uh, let me show you some additional uh, special cards that are used in this. Here's a torpedo boat. Basically, when you play that, you pick a ship. And uh, let's say he picks that one there, and he rolls a dice. If he rolls a six, it's sunk. He actually did sink it. So he sunk that one. Another one is a submarine, which works basically the same. Uh, what's good about the submarine is it can get... Uh, uh, smoke doesn't stop it from attacking you, so the submarine could attack this one on a roll of five or six. He sinks it. Here's a minesweeper. If this guy here had pulled this card, he could remove the minefield with it. And here's additional damage. Uh, additional damage, he just puts it on one that's already damaged. You can't put it on an undamaged one. It has to go on a damaged one. And here's the best card in the game. This is Destor Destroyer Squadron. It's got special rules. When you put it out, your, your opponents all get to shoot any uh, salvos they can shoot at it to try to sink it. So uh, both in turn will do so. And if it hasn't been sunk, it takes four four hits here. You just roll a die and the number rolled is the number of ships you sink. This guy's got smoke out so he can't actually attack him with the destroyer, but he can attack him so he'll roll a dice and he gets five so he, he one, two, three, four, five so he just, uh, th that guy's out this uh, hand. So the round goes in until there's only one player with ships and then after that victory points are Calculating depending on the amount of victory points determines whether you do another round or not. So the way you determine victory points is you sum up the hit number totals of all the ships in your deep six pile. Like he's got one here with a six on it. And if you're the player who is the last alive, you get 10 points. Or if you're a player who did not make it to the end of the round, then you lose 10 points. Uh, or you have 10 points subtracted from uh, the total of your deep six pile. And the game, uh, if no one has 100 points, then another round is played. And the game just continues until someone gets uh, 100 points. So it's a very simple game, but it's uh, very fun. Uh, Len and I will give you our review now. Hey guys, Dave and Len here. We just played Naval War. This is a really old game. It's, uh, I think it's more than 40 years old. can't remember who the original manufacturer was. It might have been Operational Studies Group. But this is the Avalon Hill Edition. What do you think of it, Len? Well... If you're a serious naval uh, war gamer, you'll be disappointed. It uh, uh, it doesn't have all the great uh, nautical details, and you and you won't uh, ruin your knees like you do in the Fletcher Pratt games. It doesn't have the details that are in general quarters. However, it's meant to be an abstract card game where everybody has the ships. You get dealt the ships of various nations, and you uh, pick cards, and you. Uh, throw salvos on it. It's meant to be like a little different card game. Not a serious a military simulation. Yeah, th th this one's just meant as a beer and pretzels game. It's a lot of fun, but uh, the, the thing that uh, some people don't like about it is that the ships you have are from different nations. Uh, so you could have Japanese and German ships and American and uh, on your side. Yeah. Italian uh, and British. Yeah. Really, all that uh, matters in this game is the uh, size of the guns and uh, uh, more than the ship type. The only ship, other ship types that matter are submarines, uh, torpedo boats, and uh, aircraft carriers. Other than that, all ships are basically 
uh, abstracted as the same thing, just with a different sailboat size. And when you get uh, cards to shoot sailboats, you have to have a ship that has that sailboat. So if you have a 15-inch sailboat card, you have to have a ship with 15-inch guns in order to shoot it. Now you're wasting card. Or if you have a gun, a ship with an 18-inch gun, and you don't have an 18-inch gun, it's useless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're also complaining about the 18-inch uh, should be a lot uh, higher hit number. Yeah, there. I agree, because I saw the 18-inch card I had uh, was a, I think it was a 3, which I thought was ridiculous. I mean, if that uh, hits another ship, that's going to do some serious damage uh, around that big. That's even bigger than a New Jersey shell. A New Jersey shell, which uh, is a 16-inch gun, I think the shell weighs an entire ton, and an 18-inch shell weighs even more than that. So, mm -hmm. I think an 18-inch is actually almost twice the size. Yeah, uh, might it, it could twice, have been. Twice the weight. It, it could have been, yeah. Now, it's more than just three inches. It's a longer shell, too, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't have those details that, you know, in this game, if you get a Yamato, it doesn't really mean that much. Your gra the other guy's Graph 3 could uh, pound lumps on you if he gets enough uh, the right caliber cards. True. So, yeah. but it's meant to be like a goofy game. Yeah, yeah, it, it's fun to play. I always wonder how they dreamt up this idea. Well, my dad said that he had played with the uh, original uh, game designer, uh, Neil Zimmerer, Zimmerer, at his house uh, many years ago when he was designing this. Uh, he's uh, local to the Chicagoland area. I'm not sure if Neil Zimmerer is still around or not. No, no one's uh, seen him in decades. Mm -hmm. So, Well, if he's not, he, uh, he probably voted in the election. Yeah, that's probably true. He probably voted times. several times in the election if he's no longer with us. <laughs> Especially, we're from Chicago, so stuff like uh, people voting when they're dead or, or statues voting, this, this is a, uh, a current, something that occurs at every election. So. <laughs> yeah, well, well, lately it's been spreading to other cities, too. That's what we should be worried about. Yeah. All right. But anyhow, next week we'll have something new. I'm not sure what, but have a good evening.